back to the Beaver Sports Show. I'm Jenna Lane. And I'm Jake McGrady. And I'm Josh Warden. Here's what you missed over the winter break. The, so far this season, the OSU women's basketball team has faced a long road, literally. Five of the six Beavers games in conference were road games. Both of the team's two Pac-12 wins were against the Ducks in a pair of Civil War victories. Final score of those were 88-80 to in Eugene and 84-70 to in Corvallis. After the two games, the Beavers traveled to California to take on USC and UCLA and fell to both. The women's team had an overall record of 10-8 to and looked to defeat the Washington Huskies tomorrow at 6 p.m. in Gill Coliseum. The Oregon State men's basketball team hosted the Civil War game on January 19th at Gill Coliseum. With more on the game, here's our reporter James Chavez with the highlights. Oregon State entered the 340th Civil War with a record of 9-7. The Beavers got a season-high crowd with 6,358 fans in the stands. Redshirt senior Angus Brandt helped propel the Beavers in both the first and second half. Brandt just a pick for Hollis Cook, Cook to Brandt with a quick drive to the hoop for the layup. Brandt collected 10 of his 14 points in the second half and hits a baseline hook shot right here on Ducks' Richard R. Marty. Brandt will continue. Pass from Nelson. It's Brandt versus Ben Carter. Looking for the pass. He feels the room. Brandt shot. Shot. Good. Forcing the timeout and giving the Bees a 48-40 lead. Angus also got some hustle points as well with his tremendous defense, diving for a missed rebound. Oregon only had one lead in the opening score during the game, but did continue to push the Beavers. Guard Damian Dotson with a pull-up three. Good. He finished with seven points, and the Beavs held a 44-33 lead. Next possession, Richard R. Marty catches, goes to the hoop. Hoop goes in with the floater, and it falls. Then, guard Joseph Young wants to join the party. He goes top of the three, looking for a shot. Shot. Good. 46-40 now. But this was senior guard Roberto Nelson's night as he drives to the hoops, gets the contact and the foul and the bucket. Then, after a beaver turnover, a duck turnover, a beaver gets the ball. Callis Cook to Roberto Nelson and Roberto throws it down. 12.30 left in the game. Devon Collier gets the ball, runs down the baseline, gives it to Olaf Shaftenar, gives to Nelson. Nelson with the three money. That puts Oregon State up by 10. Nelson would end with 22 points, four rebounds and two assists and the band is feeling it. The game got a bit chippy at the end with a hard foul on Eric Moreland as he drives to the hoop. But Eric Moreland would respond with a monster block. Devon Collier getting the bucket. He scored nine points and grabbed eight rebounds. Angus Brent here sets up Langston Morris Walker with a nice dish and gets to the basket. Oregon still continue to fight. A three-pointer from Jason Callis. That would make it 67-60, but you know Be Benny was never worried. Collier tips it in from Angus Brandt's shot. Another Brandt setup. He finds Nelson cutting to the basket. The Beavers gain a 73-66 lead that would get them to the free throw line for the final minutes of the game. The men's basketball team took on Washington State last night in Beasley Coliseum and the Beavs caged the Cougars with Roberto Nelson's game high of 26 points, which sealed why he's the Pac-12's leading scorer. Angus Brandt also added 14 points to help the Beavers to a victory over Wazoo, 66-55. Devon Collier had a great second half with making 9 out of 10 points in the final frame. Head coach Craig Robinson was quoted saying, It's nice to get a couple wins in a row and build some momentum. This might be the first time that we have been able to set the tone of a game on the road like we did. Oregon State is 11-7 overall with a 3-3 three three Pac-12 mark. The Beavers made over 50% of their field goal attempts and they won the rebounding battle for the sixth consecutive game. The Beavers dictated nearly, nearly the entire contest. Washington State scored the first bucket of the game and that was the only lead that the Cougars would have. For men's wrestling on Sunday afternoon, Oregon State fell to North Dakota State 19-17. NDSU got on the board early, getting the first nine points of the match at 125 and 133. Our very own Joey Delgado got the Beavers back on track with a 9-4 decision over Clay Cafey, reducing the lead to six. Seniors Scott Sakaguchi and RJ Pena weren't enough behind with weren't far behind with back-to-back -back decisions in their own matches. Taylor Meeks won a 9-2 decision over Tyler Lehman, bringing the Beavs within five, 
But to bring it close, Amavir Desi had three more points for Oregon State with a total of 10 to four decision over Evan Nunston, but it wasn't quite enough, ending the match 19 to 17. So for you, Beaver Nation, we sent our reporter, Katie Beasley, to help introduce our new weekly segment, Fan of the Week. Is it a bird? No. Is it a plane? No. What could it be? It's Super Beaver Man. Well, my name is Travis Chubb, like Katie had just said. I'm 19, and I'm a freshman here at Oregon State. I'm an exercise and sports science major, and I'm part of the OSU rowing team also. So uh, that's where a lot of my school spirit comes from. What does it mean to be a Beaver fan for you? Well, I think that school spirit is very important in a student, and I think it helps just kind of bring the whole community of the school together. And so I feel like with my cheering and yelling at sporting events, that really helps people get more excited and brings people together. All right, what's the average day in the life for you? Well, like I said, I'm on the rowing team, so that usually consists of waking up early and having to go work out. But then after that, I'll go and I'll get on some Oregon State clothes, usually sweats and a sweatshirt. And then I'll go to class, but then I'll usually get ready for whatever sporting events at nighttime, whether it's basketball, volleyball, football game, whatever it is. So it affects your wardrobe. Does that affect your wallet at all? Yes, it gets pretty expensive, but uh, I mean, I feel like I have quite a, uh, now that I have been here for quite a while, I have enough Oregon State clothes that I can kind of cycle there. I have a lot of shirts and all that stuff. <laughs> all right, how do you prepare for a game day? Well, it depends on the sport usually. Um, it usually starts off with me trying to figure out which outfit for Super Beaver Man to wear that day. Like on, uh, during the Civil War for basketball, I had to get my camo uh, suspenders and my Duck Dynasty beard, which is good. <laughs> and then I had to go find some friends that wanted to go with me. And then uh, I usually get to the a game a little bit early, get some good seats, and get ready to watch the game. Speaking of friends, is this like being a super fan if, if affect your relationships at all? Um, I think my girlfriend's a little bit embarrassed by me, and my friends are sometimes. But then some of them are really excited, and they get into it also. So I think it's a good thing overall for my relationships. How do you feel when the Beavers lose? It's pretty upsetting, especially I was at the Civil War game and that was a heartbreaker. Yeah. I was there with my whole family and it was really exciting and then it was, it was a heartbreaker. and it was, it was pretty down for the next couple of days. That's how it is with most sports when we lose. Pretty emotional. That's nice that you're passionate about your school. But how do you feel when they win? I'm very excited. Usually I'll go and probably get a Chipotle bur uh, burrito <laughs> or something like that and go hang out with my friends and we'll do something fun or something like that. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jenna and I saw you on the sidelines filming the last football game. How'd you score that? Well, there was a competition on Instagram run by the OSU Beaver Dam, and it was for your best orange out competition during the Stanford game. And I uh, posted my Super Beaver Man pictures and ended up winning it. So I got field passes for me and my dad because he was down for that weekend. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Do you have any, besides that, maybe your favorite experience at OSU so far? Um, I think I really like the volleyball games probably because not a lot of people are there, but there's still enough where – my cheering is heard, but everyone hears it, and especially the other team. They don't really like me that much, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, last question. How long have you been a Beaver fan? Well, ever since I uh, committed to coming here last spring, I've uh, loved Oregon State. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. So, we are adding a very new segment into the sports show, and that's going to be... Pro sports talk. Pro sports. So I'd like to start out with the Blazers. Rip favorite City. Favorite team, Rip of City. course. Got to stay local. Um, now, we all watched the game against Disappointing. The disappointing game. You know, I thought it was going to end differently. Kevin Durant played out of his mind. He, he, he went off at the end. crazy. Now, I, I know you're a huge Trailblazers fan, Jake. I want to know if you compare our fan of the week for the Beavers, if, how much of a fan he is for Oregon State, and compare that to how big of a fan you are for the Trailblazers, who wins? Okay, so you know, I don't, I'm not one to dress up per se per games, okay. but I did make a bet with my roommate that if the Blazers win the championship this year, I will be getting a very small Blazers tattoo. Ooh. And I'm wow. dead serious about that. If, if the Blazers win, you get a tattoo. Oh yeah. Is it, where's it gonna go, that's the question. Neck, face, neck. back. Whoa, forehead? I no, not like, my neck. Not I my feel neck. like you get a tattoo when you lose a bet, but if you I win know. the bet, like this cool. seems like counterproductive. 
Uh, that's how confident I am. I don't oh. care. All right. I like it. Might even, you know, tat 2014 champions. <laughs> but, you know, great year so far, 31 and 11, playing the Nuggets right now, technically, yeah. as we speak. Well, not technically, but. If you're watching us on YouTube tomorrow, <laughs> you will know. Then it was in the past, and you will know. know. You know <laughs> we more won. than we do if you're watching this tomorrow. But they were winning earlier. Yes. Um, from where we left the show. off. They might be losing now, but I, I'm confident in the Blazers. I think they have this one in the bag. Oh, I think I'm confident so. in the For Blazers. Sure. After that loss, too, I think that might have revamped them up. They're ready to go. I think they'll kick it. And then also, something that I wanted to mention was, if you guys watched the Richard Sherman video, <laughs> that with Aaron Andrews, that poor girl. <laughs> poor girl, lucky girl, whatever you want to call it. That's true. What do you guys think about that? YouTube well, sensation. The, okay, the one interview clip of Sherman didn't show what he said to Aaron before. And when he first came over to her, before they were on air, they gave each other, they hugged, it looked like they knew each other, and then he started yelling at the camera while he was being interviewed by her. But it wasn't like he was yelling at her and she wasn't scared or anything. I think it was kind of blown a little bit out of proportion. It wasn't that big of a deal. It's all that's been swear. talked about on Sports Center. That's know. true. Well, it makes it seem like it's a little planned then. If he's yeah. all talking to her like, you know, totally normal, and then as soon as the camera That's what's turns been said, on, you know. Well, he's I mean, it's all the heat going of the moment. crazy. The ironic Beats by Drake commercial. It's the heat of the moment. I'm starting to feel like it's a little planned. It was like 30 seconds after he made that tip for the interception. And to send your team to true. the Super Bowl. That's true. That's you know, we got a 49ers fan. Ooh. Who was That's not rough. pleased with the win, but I was pleased. <laughs> Go Seahawks! No way. I'm no a big. Way. I I'm, I don't have a. I don't have a problem with Sherman. So we have two against one right here. Me and Josh are both going for the Broncos. You know who I'm Seahawks going for. Right Seahawks here. all the way. What are you guys' predictions? Well, for? when I was going for the Broncos, for the record, Broncos have been my Super Bowl pick from the beginning of the year. But when I said I thought the Broncos are going to win this one. I thought I was going to be the one lone Broncos pick in both of you guys. But now Jake, you're. She's a one. hawk hater though. <laughs> a hawk sure. hater. A hawk right. hater. Um, but I'm, I'm confident in, in the Broncos. You're pro Broncos, but rooting for the Seahawks, you said? I am, I'm pulling for the Seahawks. Got to go for the local team. But the fact that the Broncos are going to win this game, is not a win. it's a foregone conclusion. It's going to happen. I, no, I feel for the Seahawks. Absolutely. They had a great season. They're going um, to have an even better season when Russell Wilson gets his first ring. Okay, it's, rebuttal, rebuttal. Let's, why do you think the Seahawks are going to win this one? I want to know what you guys think about the cold weather. Uh, Peyton Manning, how he's going to deal with the snow. What is it like? It's supposed to be like 16 degrees. He's going to fare better than Russell Wilson. He will figure it out. We don't know that. <laughs> he will figure it out. <laughs> he can get figure, through this. He doesn't have to figure it out. He's been in the NFL for, what, 16, 17 years now? He's not, old. He's, he's old, yes. He's not, used he's not to too cold, old. But. Look at him still getting out there. He, he's he Wes like Welker, it. Wes Welker, shaky. Yeah, uh, no, Russell Wilson, shaky is. No, Russell is Wilson's what? not shaky. See, I, I, Russell Wilson has been struggling That's in true. the last I'll give few you games of the regular season. I'll and sink in a minute. if there's any part of the Broncos that the Seahawks would need, need to take advantage of, it's the secondary. Oh, and yeah. That's what the Seahawks have not been doing recently. We'll see what happens. All Final right. predictions high scoring, low scoring? Um, I'm going to go with 27 17 Broncos. We have 31 21. Denver takes it. They get out early, and Seahawks come within close late. A 10 point win for the Broncos. I'm going to go 27 24 Seahawks, and Richard Sherman's going to do a backflip, intercept Peyton Manning. Okay. And go crazy. All right, if you say so. That's all the time we have for tonight. It feels good to be back. Once again, I am Jake McGrady. And I am Jenna Late. And follow us on Beeb's Sports Show. It'll be the best decision you make tonight. My name is Josh Warden, and I bought this tie on eBay for $2.